Hi, Dan. Hi, Kyle. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm okay. I'm in uh, Victoria, British Columbia, on the island I grew up on. It's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> is it kind of weird because you don't go there anymore, and this is kind of one of those surreal things, or? Uh, no, actually, I come to the island quite frequently because the rest of Wolf Parade now lives here. But I'm here uh, to play a show with my other band, with Operators. Well, yeah. that's a lot to talk about because I feel like that's all a part of it. But uh, Cry, Cry, Cry and, uh, and Wolf Parade are officially back. I mean, there was the EP, and that's always sort of testing the water, but I think we can say it's official now, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I don't know. Was the, yeah, official. was the EP to get the gears working again, or were you guys like diving right in right away, knowing that this was going to be full on? Uh, I think we're, we're diving right in right away, knowing that it was going to be full on, and, and I think, you know, like when we started talking about playing these shows, and uh, especially when that uh, residency run in... Um, New York got brought up. That was kind of our debut back, right? You know, our debut on the stage back live. We wanted to write new music. We didn't want to do it without having at least a bunch of songs that we had written together, you know, first. So so that was that was kind of our priority. We're like, okay, if we can write songs together, then we deserve to be back on the stage. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. if we can still write tunes together, then, then these shows make sense. And if we can't, then they don't make sense. Right. So... So it really kind of started from from writing in the EP, and then and then that justified the live shows. And then the goal was always to you know go forward and make an album. I gotta say, like, I don't want to sound this in a condescending way, but I was so surprised at how good that EP was because, especially as an EP, you know, it doesn't have to be the greatest. You know, here's a few tracks reintroducing things, but it was so good that it really did set everything up. Like, I really hope this isn't the only thing. You know, I hope this isn't. <laughs> Not all that we're getting. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. You know, it was it was great writing those songs and making and making the EP. It was it was difficult recording it. I found that that process was you know we hadn't done it in a long time and and we did it remotely, kind of uh, out on the island. And it you know at times it was it, it it felt hard to kind of communicate like the 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 sort of energy of the song to take. But I think we got it with the record, you know. So if you like the EP, I think you'll like the album. <laughs> Well, I mean, even from the first single, Valley Boy, that's got to be one of your most radio-friendly songs uh, as Wolf Parade that I think I've ever heard. So it's Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of that was working with uh, John Goodmanson, too. And, like, we did a ton of pre-production for the record in, in terms of just, like, getting in the studio and running down these songs and just trimming anything that we thought was extraneous off of them, yeah. which is not something we've really done before. You know, Spencer and I have worked really hard on, on like, cutting out, sort of just, like, trimming the fat off, off tunes and kind of pushing ourselves to, like, reach for sounds that we, we wouldn't normally reach for, you know, yeah. texturally and stuff. I was kind of wondering, though, you know, because you've got the history, you know, there is the history of Wolf Parade and the sound that you guys sort of had back then. And, like, going into these, do you at all try to reconnect with any of that? Um, and I guess especially now that, you know, you've got other projects that you can you can stretch out on. D does Wolf Parade have to sound like anything? Um, that's a good question, actually. Uh, you know, I think I think the trick to Wolf Parade for everybody is is that when we when we get in a room together, we no one is judging anybody else's contributions to the songs. You know, like we're critical of parts if they don't work. But I, I think the key is just basically it's a, it is like the ultimate musical safe space and lyrical safe space for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that allows everybody to just be themselves. So no matter what happens, you know, no matter if Spencer's working on, had been working on, you know, two years worth of solo piano stuff or my sort of electronic stuff with operators, uh, when we get together, it just always ends up sounding like Wolf Parade. There's, there's a way that we play together that, uh, that doesn't happen outside of that group of people, yeah. and and we've made it so uh, we've made it we've made the rehearsing and the recording process so that like everybody is allowed and comfortable to do that. Nobody's being pushed and pulled in any direction. So there's no judgment, you know. Right. It's really yeah, and then it just ends up sounding like Wolf Parade magically. <laughs> <laughs> With all your acts too, I mean, you know, operators. If you want to count Divine Fits in there, uh, is there a main project for yeah. you even at this point? Everything is equal, and it just depends on what time of year it is and what the what the you know what the album cycle focus is is on. You know, last year I I toured pretty heavily with Wolf Parade, but I also toured pretty heavily with Operators, and the Operators album cycle is winding down. Like with these two shows I'm about to play on the West Coast, 
and then wolf rate is ramping up. I know that that means operators should be writing now and wolf rate should be focusing on, you know, playing live shows. And that's, that's just kind of a weird circadian rhythm of, of having two bands. <laughs> <laughs> and no rest. There's a focus on the project depending on, you know, depending on what is going to take up the most of my time on the road, right? So right now it's Wolf Parade, and at home it's Operators. Now I'm looking at some of these album ti- or the uh, the song titles on on your album, and I don't know. There there does seem to be a thread going on here, and not knowing who wrote what songs, by the way. But when you look at it, and it's weaponized, I am an alien here, artificial life, and and even Lazarus online, and you're dreaming, and maybe incantation. Like there seems like there's a central thought going on with something here yeah i I mean i i kind of hesitate to there's it's not definitely not a a a concept album but uh i think spencer and i are both both lyrically are have been writing more immediate songs you know immediate as it as it relates to what's happening uh politically in the world and and you know our our current state so it's it's not an overarching concept but i think a lot of these songs are informed by sort of the dis- disillusionment that was felt after after the trump election uh i had just moved back from the united states like before the election happened because i i had a really terrible feeling that no matter who won things things were going to get more polarized in america and being a canadian citizen i was just like i i think i should i think my time here is up i, think <laughs> I need to go home so and I, feel, I feel bad saying that because I, you know, most of my I have, most of my friends are American. <laughs> All the people I work with are American. A lot of our, you know, I'd say like at least half of our fan base is American. At least, you know, to be able to have that exit strategy is kind of a. Is a I know it's a it's a luxury, but um, but I did feel relieved when I got back to Canada and a lot of the song writing that I contributed on this record. A lot of the lyrics are are kind of reflective of that. I think. Yeah. The artificial life is about my time living in San Jose, and uh, you know, weaponized directly addresses like uh, you know the election. And, but there's a lot of other stuff on the record too, so that's why I wouldn't say it's not it's not quite a political concept album. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I think any artist who's paying attention out there finds that this stuff just seeps in, even if you're not even if you're not going for it. You know, it's there. It's what we're looking at. Yeah, unless you're writing like. Party, party anthems or you're writing within like a specific uh, you know fantasy genre that you <laughs> you've developed for yourself I can tell you, the yeah. artists that I talk to are not doing that they are they are not they are doing this yeah. this is this is what it is so I think it's something that, you know it's, it's at the forefront of everyone's mind the yeah. backdrop to, to life in North America these days so right. why not right <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, I enjoy how you're spinning it. Uh, how how I love these songs that I've heard so far. I'm just you know really grateful and happy that you guys are still doing this again. So, and and it's the all grown up oh, version, you. I guess. Whatever this is, version two. I don't know. It's but it's working. <laughs> yeah, the all grown up version. That's yeah. It's funny. It's it's. I'd say the band is a. It's a lot less chaotic than it used to be. You know, like interpersonally and uh, and on tour. There's a lot less. Uh, there's a lot less boboing, I guess, you know, like yeah. just this easily avoided mistakes, <laughs> easily avoided disastrous mistakes or like alcohol related mishaps. <laughs> the things that can yeah. happen so when you just nice. take a little bit of time away from each other and just, you know, just take a little bit of time away. So it all works. Yeah, out. exactly. Yeah. Right, and it was great talking to you, man. Uh, I hope to catch one of these shows sometime soon and, uh, and catch up again. We will definitely be in your neighborhood, in your area. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, buddy. Take care. Thanks, right. man. You too. All right. Nice Bye. talking to you. Bye.